Well, when it comes to rubbing elbows with A-listers, he's done it all. Mm -hmm. U.S. presidents, Georgia governors, state senators, the list is endless. Yeah, but you know, nothing could prepare former UGA football coach Vince Dooley for the kind of energy he would encounter by spending the day with our very own <laughs> Ranger Nick. Well, I tell you what, folks, in my role as Ranger Nick here with the Georgia Farm Monitor, I get a chance to do a lots of different crazy, wonderful things. And today, I happen to be standing next to legendary UGA football coach Vince Dooley. Coach Dooley's here with me today. We are at his home right here outside of Athens, Georgia. And, Coach, we've got a beautiful tree behind us here in your garden. And I'm learning more and more about your passion for gardening. Tell us what we're looking at here behind us. Well, that's one of many uh, specimens that I have, and that is truly a specimen. Yeah, this is actually a ball cypress, and uh, this particular one is called Cascade Falls, mm. and it really is kind of the crown jewel of the, of the weepers. Uh, because I'm so into it, not only do I have this ball cypress called uh, Cascade Falls, but I have another little one right next to it, and that one is called Falling Water. Now the question is, some say falling water is better than Cascade Falls, so I've got them side by side and we'll see. Cascade <laughs> Falls is a lot bigger and a lot older and little falling waters is just ready to do his thing, so we'll find out, but that's what f what's fun about what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Man, it's wonderful. Even in his retirement, the idea of competition comes out more and more. It's wonderful, Coach. We're looking at this guy back behind us. Talk to us about, I understand you've got a book about gardening and your passion for gardening has just really exploded, has blossomed in the past few years. How did you get into this, this passion for gardening? Well, I always say I'm an inspiration for any Anybody that wants to be a gardener late in life because if I can be one anybody can be one and if I can write a book about something I don't even know anything about I should be an inspiration for anybody that wants to write a book so I think the the basic is that the main thing about living around a university if you got a curiosity about anything you can satisfy it because there is an expert on everything and I have always enjoyed auditing courses there's a lot of fun in learning and I've always enjoyed courses in history the Civil War even took some art history courses uh, and I was always curious about trees and plants and thought I'd take one course and I would take care of it one course led to another and I got bit by the bug and there's no cure for the infection and so here I am this is my golf and this is my my little garden and uh, I love it. Well, folks, there's a lot of talk about farm to table and making things convenient and agricultural awareness, knowing where your food comes from. And coach, talk to us a little bit about some of your plans to make things convenient here at your house as it pertains to your farm, your garden, to your table. Well, there's nothing like fresh, fresh vegetables. And Barbara has been after me all the time. Why don't you grow something we can eat? I'm an ornamental guy. I've got all these millions of plants. And then when I finally try, she says, that is the worst tomatoes I've ever tasted. That's the worst squash. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let her be the vegetable woman of my garden. And I've got a garden plan right over here. Would oh, you that, like that's to good. Let's, check, let's take a look at and, where this is going to be. In fact, this is the... Uh, this is the soil, this is super sod. So this whole area in here is gonna be Barbara's vegetable garden. And the great thing is it's only five steps from her car. So she can't have any excuses that it's too far out. That's it's right. gonna be right here. It'll have plenty of sun. And she absolutely loves vegetables and I do too. So this is going to be Barbara's vegetable garden, and I can't wait to get it constructed and get going with her. This is a great example of I've got a garden for all seasons, and I've got a variety of gardens within a garden. And uh, necessity is a mother of invention. We had a drought. I had to dig a well. All of a sudden, an ugly pump. But I've always loved a Japanese tea house. So I got me a little tea house over the pump, and then I've got these little miniature uh, plants. For instance, right here, this is a white pine, if you can imagine. Usually wow. they're, they're 70, 80 feet tall. This one's called mini twist. Mm. So you have a little small miniature type gardens within a Japanese garden. And that's what this is. And under here is your favorite, the little owl. 
which uh, I got at Gibbs Garden. They've got these that they can't keep them. And I've got three different sizes. That's a mini miniature or the middle one. Mm -hmm. I've got bigger ones and smaller ones. Uh, there's a Mahonia called Soft Crest, mm. and that's a nice Mahonia as well. So anyway, that's, that's another example of a garden for all seasons. Absolutely, and an outstanding example at that, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Folks at home know that I love to wear my University of Georgia Extension shirt and support our extension agents, not only here in Georgia, but around the country. Have you ever relied on extension for information to help you in, in what you're doing here in the garden or in the past? Well, absolutely, when I first came to Georgia, because the extension service makes the university all over the state. And so when I first came, I went to the uh, head of the extension service, a fellow named Hoop Eberhardt, and I told him I needed your help because we're going to do some recruiting in all of these counties in the state of Georgia, and I needed some kind of contact. He said, okay. So we said, meet me at Rock Eagle. We're going to have our annual meeting down there this summer. And so he charged every one of the county agents. He says, this is Coach Dooley. He's the head coach of the university. You all work for the university, and I expect you to help him. <laughs> and I'll tell you, they all did, despite the fact some of them are a couple of Auburn graduates. <laughs> hey, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So anyway, they really helped us early on. Probably the first five or six years really helped us in recruiting throughout the state when that was legal to do. You can't do it now, right. except you could go to them and they can give you information and keys to who might be the key in a particular county. What a joy it has been today, Coach, to hang out with you here in the garden and get to hang out and learn things from you about so many of these plants. Thank you so much. Look, I want you to come back. You've only seen half the garden. And besides that, I can always use an extra hand. i got a <laughs> shovel or a few that you can, uh, you can help me with. So there's a lot to see here, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Dick. Thank you very, very much, Coach. And thank you all so much for, for watching and uh, listening to these stories with the Coach and I today. Remember, enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. And I don't know if you can tell, we've had a great time together today. Keep the emails and the tweets coming, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Can't wait to see you again next month. We'll see you.